This is you. And this is your brain on metric conversions. Well, don't worry, my friend, because we're going to turn that frown upside down and you're going to realize just how unexpectedly happy you are by the end of this video. Metric conversions are actually very simple. And once you know this little trick I'm going to show you, you'll be jumping for joy, I'm sure. So let's get down to business. All right, so first let's grab our metric table. Now your professor may or may not allow you to use such a table on the test. However, when first learning metric conversions, it's very important that you use this table. Also, I would highly recommend that you memorize some key values. Here, I'll highlight the most commonly used ones, although depending upon your professor, you may need to know and memorize more than the ones I've highlighted. All right, so let's suppose we have to convert 250 kilometers into centimeters. So the first step is to write down the given value. In this case, it was 250 kilometers. The second step is to set up your conversion fraction. This conversion fraction is set up by multiplying our given value of 250 kilometers by some fraction of units. Now, don't get scared with the word fraction, all right? All it means is some value on the top divided by some value on the bottom. Or as my three-year-old says, bum bum. So the third step is to place the units into the conversion fraction. We're going to work with the units before we work with the numbers. And this might feel slightly unnatural since us humans like to deal with numbers and not letters in math. However, trust me, you're going to want to do it this way. Whatever unit we're given, in this case, kilometers, that unit will go on the bum bum. And whatever unit we want to convert into, in this case, centimeters, will go on the top. We do this so that the unit that we started with, in this case, kilometers, will cancel. And thus, we will be left with the unit we desire, which is centimeters. All right. Step four. We will now place the values from our metric table on the right-hand side into the conversion fraction. And according to the metric table, the kilo prefix has a value of 10 to the positive 3, and the centi prefix has a value of 10 to the minus 2. Step five. Now time for the prestige, right? Meaning the trick. By the way, by the way. I, could, I couldn't help but use that word. Great movie. Check it out. Christian Bale, Ed Norton, they're fantastic. Leave a comment below if you like the movie and also if you have a good movie recommendation that might not be uh, so popular. I'm always interested in figuring out or finding uh, good movies to watch. All right. So step five, flip the signs of the exponent. This is the most important step here. Let's zoom in. We're going to take the kilometer exponent value of positive three and flip it into a negative three. And we're going to take the centimeters exponent of negative two and flip it to a positive two. And voila. All we now need to do is calculate. So take out that calculator and plug in 250 times 10 raised to the positive two, and then divide it by 10 raised to the negative three. And what do you get? Right. 25 million centimeters, or AKA 2.5 times 10 to the seventh centimeters. And that's it, ladies and gentlemen. You literally can do all metric conversions this way and in a single step. There's literally no need to convert from like kilometers to then the base unit of meters and then to centimeters. It's nonsense. Don't waste your time. Let's do one more example and we'll see just how quick this is. All right. So let's suppose we have to convert uh, 1.9 milliliters into hectoliters. So step one, write down the given value. Step two, set up your conversion fraction. Step three, place the given unit, which is the unit you want to cancel on the bum bum, and the unit you want to find on the top. Step four, place in the values into your conversion fraction according to the metric table. And step five, most important, flip the signs. And there, voila, all done. Calculator time, plug it in. 1.97 times 10 raised to the negative two divided by 10 raised to the positive three. And what do you get? 0 0.0000197 hectoliters or 1.97 times 10 to the minus five hectoliters. All right, one more example. Last example, I promise, I promise. 
and then you're completely set to crush any metric conversion you get. Let's convert 435 milligrams into grams. All right, step one, write down the given value. Step two, set up your conversion fraction. Step three, place the given unit, which you want to cancel on the bum bum, and the unit you want to find on the top. Step four, place in the values into your conversion fraction according to the metric table. Now remember, gram is a base unit, okay? And step five, flip the signs of the exponent. If it has an exponent though, right? And since gram is a base unit, meaning it, there is no prefix for gram, it has a value of one and there's no exponent and thus nothing to flip. So just leave it alone. And you would treat meter, liter, joule, hertz, no, not the car company, ampere, tesla, not elon, newton, or coulomb in the exact same way as we're treating the gram in this problem. All right, so let's actually now flip the exponent sign. And there, voila, all done. Calculator time, plug it in. 435 times one divided by 10 raised to the positive three, and what do you get? 0.435 grams or 4.35 times 10 to the negative one grams. And now we are done, all right? Go crush any metric conversion problem you like. And guys, thanks for tuning in. We really hope you see how easy it actually is to do metric conversions with one little trick, right? So simple. If you wouldn't mind helping us out and helping our channel grow, hit that subscribe button and tell basically everyone you know about this video. Mom, Dad, Gramps, Gram, Aunt Susie, Uncle Bob, because quite honestly, who doesn't have an Uncle Bob? UPS driver, mailman, a guy you cut you off on the highway, doesn't matter. Basically anyone. Until next time, my friends.